Good morning, everyone. Um, as you can hear from my voice, I literally just got up and I'm headed out to get some breakfast. Uh, I just had the triathlon yesterday and we got in pretty late last night, so just went to bed. And now that I'm up, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about how the triathlon went for me and things that I'm looking to improve on throughout the rest of the season and just kind of talking about it. So let's get to breakfast. Okay, so let's talk about the Caltri Monticello Man 2021 triathlon. Uh, throughout this, there isn't going to be any videos or anything. This was my first time competing in this event, and I didn't really know the course. I wanted to be able to focus on competing and really taking this as a warm up for the rest of my season. So I don't have any videos that I'm going to be able to show you for this one. So my experience with the Monticello Man Triathlon, specifically the organization of the event was quite poor. Communication beforehand was very limited. About two weeks, maybe three weeks out, they changed the rule to no spectators inside the community, which is understandable in the time of COVID. Um, it was quite a bummer because um, myself and my sister-in-law both had a few people that were going to be coming to support us that uh, had to actually cancel their reservations because they were no longer able to see the event. Um, however, on race day, there were tons of people that were cheering people on inside of the community. There was a wide range of people that came in to cheer. So it was really disappointing that they didn't enforce that at all. I know other competitors had a lot of their plans changed based on that statement. For the swim, it was a seated rolling start, put a lot on the athletes at the last moment. So told that they were going to be setting us up by projected times were for completing. Um, however, there were just some orange sticks in the sand and they said, line up along that according to what you think your time is going to be. And so we're like trying to talk to the other athletes, like, where do you think you're going to be placing? Where do you think you're going to be placing? Trying to figure out where we want to be. Like, as soon as they made that announcement, they said, okay, we're ready to go and started sending people into the water. Everybody kind of just like panicked for lack of a better word. There was no real setup. Everybody was still kind of in a mob. So they were letting two people in at a time. So obviously there were some people that jumped in the water first that were like the fast swimmers took off. They were fine. No one really cared. But then it was kind of this like mass of people that didn't really know who should go next. This was also a group of that was about 80% new triathletes that had never competed. So an open water swim that you're not really sure how you're going to place can be quite nerve wracking. Some older guy actually just said to me, you want to go? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So we just lined up, took off. Uh, I think we maybe had like two or three people pass us, but everybody was so confused at the start line that people just weren't getting in the water. Oh, actually one more point on the swim. So we were told that it was going to be a 400 yard swim, which Hey, 400 yards, pretty easy swim, jump in the water, jump out. Like it's, it's not hard. Distances that people were actually pulling off their watches were closer to 800 or 900. Um, suggesting that the swim was probably more distance as a 750, which would be your standard sprint distance. However, the swim was only scheduled to be a 400 yard and the bike was only scheduled to be 11 miles. So it, definitely a shortened triathlon, a little bit more super sprint style, but people were pulling these much larger numbers off and it kind of just spoke a little bit more to how they weren't prepared. And then the route of the swim we were given was a triangle route uh, in a counterclockwise fashion and then exiting off to the side, um, not crossing the same timing mat that we entered on, but actually crossing a timing mat further up the hill. Uh, that was changed to a single distance buoy. The guy was pretty adamant. He's like, yeah, make sure you just go out to that buoy, left shoulder, round the buoy, and then come back in. However, our entrance spot was to the left of our exit spot, which meant that if we would be taking our left shoulder into the buoy, uh, we'd just be crossing over people on the other side, um, which really seems like a minor thing when you think about it. However, just that simple oversight 
really speaks to what was happening at this event and kind of the lack of planning that seems to have gone into it. For the bike section of the triathlon, um, it was pretty much a loop. So there wasn't really anywhere that you could get lost on it. However, I would have liked to see some kind of marking on the ground to kind of acknowledge that you are going the right direction. Something simple is even just like a red arrow that's spray painted on the side of the road is super helpful and just kind of acknowledging where you're meant to be going. Other than that, no real complaints with the bike. For the run, I would say that it was a little bit worse at the start of the run because there was an arrow on the ground that told you how to leave the transition zone. And there was a lady that said, yep, go that way. But then you were kind of just in this neighborhood that it all kind of like has these streets that V off. There's no real way to tell where exactly you were supposed to go. And so I actually ended up asking just a person who lived in the community. And he said, oh yeah, they went that way down the street that didn't really make sense for them to go down. So I kind of like jogged that way. And then I saw someone at the end of a road who was like pointing to continue along what was then an out and back. The planning was not there for this triathlon. Having competed in a triathlon that was at a community rec center, that had more organization to it than this one did, which was quite disappointing with this being an actual company that runs multiple triathlons across the United States. Take that as you will. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience in the triathlon, how my times were, and what I felt like I can do better on for my upcoming triathlons. Okie dokie, let's talk about the way that I actually did in the triathlon. So, grab a sip of coffee here. So, my unofficial times that they printed out for me at the end of the race were with a total time of one hour, 38 minutes, and six seconds. I completed my swim in 14 minutes, 11 seconds. T1 took me five minutes, 51 seconds. The bike took me 41 minutes, 27 seconds. T2 took me four minutes, 16 seconds. And my run took me 32 minutes and 24 seconds. How did I feel throughout the triathlon? Throughout the triathlon, I felt pretty in control, <coughs> Excuse me, which was surprising, really nervous going into this triathlon. And I think it's mostly because I hadn't competed at all this year. And prior to this, I've only done one triathlon. I was nervous, especially about the swim. Uh, swimming is by far my weakest sport. And especially in open water, I don't get much practice. Um, so I struggle a lot with trying to get breakfast in in the morning solely based on nerves was not able to eat anything so got to the triathlon and got all my stuff the transition zone started setting everything up a uh, middle-aged guy ended up setting up next to me and he was way more nervous than i was um so it was actually kind of nice because i was able to like put on a little bit of a brave face and say like no it really isn't that bad it's nice short distances there isn't a lot you gotta worry about kind of just talked with him for the morning while getting ready to so we got to the swim and as i complained about earlier it was really poorly laid out but got in the water pretty early in the lineup of people and completed the swim in the 14 minute time that i said would say that i'm a little bit proud of myself because i did front crawl for the majority of it with swimming not being my strong suit i have a hard time doing front crawl for extended periods of time without getting extremely windy. And that's definitely a pacing thing. It's something I've been working on in the pool. That's something that I really want to improve on for the rest of uh, competitions this season. I switched to breaststroke for a few different parts, especially around the buoy, switched to breaststroke just to kind of make sure that I was staying close to the buoy, but not running into anybody else. Everybody was kind of popping up there. Coming back to the exit point of the swim, I was doing breaststroke and keeping pace with two other guys that were doing front crawl 
which was mildly annoying because they're kind of like slapping the water like zigzagging a little bit because they're not sighting the entire time that you can with breaststroke. I kind of gave up on breaststroke at a certain point and just started front crawling. I pulled away from these guys and as I was getting out there was a lady on the dock that was like why didn't you just do that the whole time and I was like well because it's tiring. So I uh, got out of the swim um, and ran up the hill, uh, more walked up the hill to the transition zone to kind of let myself catch my breath. And since it was a relatively steep hill, I didn't want to wind myself too much before trying to get my nutrition in my pockets. Just I wanted to be able to have a clear head while I was doing that so I didn't miss anything. The length of time from the swim exit to the transition zone was probably a good 200 yards or so. It gave me plenty of time to pull the top of my wetsuit off to be prepared for the transition zone. Got to the transition zone, popped off the bottom of my wetsuit, got my shoes on, got my nutrition in my pockets. I have two leg pockets that I'm able to put stuff in on my tri suit. So I had gels in one side and I had a uh, cliff bar in the other side. Got my helmet on, grabbed the bike and was out in the five minute, 51 second time, which was really just me kind of making sure everything was paced well. Not getting too caught up in the whole race aspect of it, but just making sure that I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. Exited the transition zone, got to the mount line, crossed the mount line, got on and started the bike. The bike felt amazing. 11 miles is a pretty easy bike ride for me. Um, I would say that normally in my training I do closer to 20 miles, 17, 20 miles is like the normal loop that I end up doing in my training. And so 11 miles is something that I know that I'm going to be able to output a lot more power on and not really have to worry about the consequences of my legs hurting afterwards. There was a lady that I was kind of trading positions with the entire time that we were riding while passing people, obviously getting passed by faster people that were behind us due to the poor setup of the swim. So completed the bike in 41 minutes, beyond happy with. Pretty much everything around Lake Monticello is rolling hills. You would have some pretty good downhills that you were able to get speed, but the uphill was just steep enough that it would kind of suck your momentum about halfway up. It gave me the opportunity to kind of get around some people because knowing that it was only 11 miles, knowing my physical fitness, especially when it comes to biking, I was really able to get out of the saddle and kind of rock the bike, stand up, put a lot more power down, pass people on the uphills, and then really pull away from them on the downhills due to being a little bit larger than a lot of the other competitors. Finished out the bike, felt really good, got into the transition zone. Road coming into the transition zone had a lot of traffic on it, um, which was a little annoying because it's all like residential traffic so it's not like a road where cars are passing you this was i was passing cars due to the speed that i was trying to maintain so there were a lot of volunteers along that route that were making cars stop so that we were able to safely pass them uh which was super nice uh because i would say that coming through that community i was probably closer to the 25 27 mile an hour point um coming up to the dismount line. Got to the dismount line, jumped off, jogged up the hill to the transition zone, swapped out my shoes, took all the uh, nutrition trash out of my pockets, uh, and started out on the run. As I was leaving the gate, I looked at a table or something and I saw a lanyard on the table and for whatever reason, something clicked and I was like, I don't have my bib number on because we didn't need to have it on for the bike ride. There was a tag on the side of the bike. I ran back up to the transition zone, grabbed my belt, clipped my belt on. And since it's only a 5K, there's no nutrition on the belt or anything. So that's kind of why I forgot about it. Put the bib on, headed back out. And then on the run, I saw multiple people that did not have their bib numbers on, which in pretty much any other race would be a disqualification. But once again, the planning here was not great. I'd say about a mile into the run, I was averaging a 10 minute mile pace, which is around where I normally run. So I knew that I was getting into a harder section of the run that was turning into more rolling hills. So I had to slow myself down a little bit. And so the way I ended up actually doing that was I maintained the 10 minute per mile pace um, 
on my downhills and about halfway through the uphill, I would switch to a walk, walk to the top, use it as a recovery moment. And then as soon as I crested the hill, start the jog on the top of the hill and then carry that speed down in about halfway up the next hill. So it kind of gave me this active recovery option while I was running and I am not a runner. I never planned to be a runner. Um, unfortunately, it's part of the triathlon. And so for once, I was actually feeling pretty comfortable in my run. My wife actually was able to find a position on the bike as well as the run where she was able to see me for a brief moment of time uh, while I biked past her. And then while I ran past her a little bit before the turn away, turnaround point, and so saw her before the turnaround point and then saw her on my way back. They had water and uh, some gels. So then the run on the way back, um, I was averaging a little bit faster than the 10. And so I was kind of keeping that same pattern with jogging down the hills, walking up to the very top, jogging down near the marina where this idiot pulled out in front of me with his bow trailer. So I had to stop because he had all this stuff hanging from his rear view mirror. It's like this 15 year old kid driving his dad's truck. And so I just had to like stop my run and just like stand there while he turned the truck around. Continued on my run. Um, and then coming into the very last section, I could hear this guy who was like trucking it up behind me. So let him get past and because I didn't really care about getting past on my run. And then as we made it up around kind of like the last corner, there was one of the volunteers that he was like running back to help at the main tent. He came flying past us on the downhill, just running. He was like, oh, come on guys, catch up. Because he just like kept slapping his legs and he was like, fresh legs, I got you guys beat. So they were taking pictures as people finished because the one thing they actually had was like a nice ending arch. Took a little bit of a walk at the one section leading up so that I knew that I would like have my breath not be completely flushed, be able to smile, give thumbs up, um, got to the finish line. Uh, and then they actually printed out our times for us, which was nice. That was my experience with the triathlon. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to tell you guys. Um, Uh, for the rest of the day, we kind of jumped around a few different places to try to see my sister-in-law while she was competing. And then we actually went to Three Notched Brewery, which was delicious. Uh, they had like pretzel bites with like their own beer cheese sauce. They were so good. Got home around 10 last night with having the triathlon in the morning, uh, like four and a half hour drive back home. How I'm feeling right now. Um, so right after the triathlon um my sister-in-law's boyfriend was asking me about like how do i feel and honestly it just felt like i went for a long run i felt much better through this triathlon than i did the last one i wasn't as concerned about nutrition i was kind of just enjoying my time and no part of it did i really feel like i was out of it as for like the soreness of my body waking up this morning though um, I have a, a little bit of pain in my right knee that is just on the inside. And I think it may just be from the way that I was like running up the hills. Cause I'm not used to that style of running that I think I might've been like turning my foot out a little bit too far. And that was putting a little bit strain on the inside of my knee. After I finish talking to you guys, I'm going to head out to the living room and do a mobility session. So honestly, I feel really good. I'm excited for my upcoming triathlons, the Poconos, the one in Lidditz that are coming up later this year. I know I really need to work on my swimming, maintain kind of my biking fitness, and I would like to start getting a little bit faster in my run. Thank you for watching this video. Later this week, I'm going to be coming out with a My Triathlon bag for 2021. Just go over everything that I used in this triathlon and plan to use in my later triathlons. But that'll be it for this video. Please leave a thumbs up and a comment below. And as always, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.